Yeah, part of what we're looking at is the fact that God's calling deep within people's spirit. People's heads don't necessarily understand the call, but their spirit certainly is drawn. And it is to leave old ways behind. Now, our soul really likes comfort and safety and security and knowing what it's doing. And, you know, God called Abraham to leave without knowing where he was going. You know, and he was looking, according to Hebrews, for a city whose architect and builder was God. Um, and so if we're going to find that city um, in the perspective of what we're looking for, then we need to engage in heaven. So touching the heavenly Jerusalem, Mount, you know, Mount Zion. So who's going to leave and who's going to operate in that? It's a choice. God's giving everyone a choice. There's a, a prophetic word um, Na- Nancy Cohen had. I don't know if you know Nancy Cohen, but she's pretty well uh, into these things. She had this vision in 1995 um, where God caught her up in the spirit and he showed her the earth realm and the spirit realm and they were very far apart. There was a separation in between them and there wasn't even an access place from one to the other. And suddenly the hand of the Lord took these two realms and began to push the two worlds together until they became overlapping. He said, I'm going to raise up a troop of overcomers who are going to stand in the overlapping place and they're going to stand between the earthly realm and the spiritual realm and they're going to go up into the spiritual realm and they're going to grab what they see and manifest it in the earth. And that, I think, you know, is what God is doing. Now, she prophesied that and saw it and at that point it wasn't possible but things have been coming together and and other people say the veil is thinning Uh you know well the veil's torn um so in that sense but i understand what they're saying because what it is it's it's coming together you know and i had a prophetic word sent to me in january it's about the incubator in january and the birth in september so the lord spoke to me and said this year will be the year that seers are coming into their multi-dimensional site a new realm of the prophetic will be birthed this year. In January, many prophetic people will enter into a season of incubation for greater manifestation. The Lord showed me that from January to September will be a time of preparation for what is going to be birthed towards the end of September. Nine-month period will be a time for us for conception and forming of supernatural movement to be birthed into the earth. He said there will be a beginning of the overshadowing much like what Mary encountered. There will be a birthing of greater p- glory in the end of September. A place of unusual power will begin to flow towards the end of 2015, like we've never seen before. Now, I'm not saying that I necessarily agree with all that, but what it's saying is that essentially we're in a time that everyone is prophetically is beginning to sense. And at the end of it, it says um, they will transcend the system of the world and operate to a higher order of supernatural and those are the sorts of things I think, yeah, that's the same basic message that God is releasing. And it's a Daniel co- company is coming that will be a company of prophets who can discern our times with pinpoint accuracy. Some will be given high places to speak into earthly government around the world. They will have a mandate from the Lord to administer justice, solve complex situations that human intellect cannot understand. Um, and I think we're gonna we are gonna see that because Where that's. Is this? Where was this from? Um, Someone sent it me. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm not sure. It might have been Charlie Champ or something, possibly. I'm not sure, but some somebody had it, and I I just sort of thought, oh, I resonate with some of this, you know. And it's like this is the year, you know. If, if something's going to happen in August, then something's going to happen soon after. Um, whatever those things are. Now, I think some some people in August will notice no difference whatsoever. Just as Samson didn't know that the anointing had left him until the Philistines came upon him and then it was all of a sudden where's 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 the strength Um, and I think some of the things will be like that so to understand the order of Melchizedek is we need to understand the nature of of just judgment and those scales understand our priestly and kingly functions understand the year of the lion uh, and begin to engage ancient paths and you know, Joshua generation operates in the order of Melchizedek as forerunners of this heavenly royal priesthood to prepare the next generation to embrace their inheritance. You know, it's heavenly positions of government where we begin to rule and legislate out of that intimacy and relationship. You know, we must 
ensure that this comes out of relationship you know we don't want to get to the point where yeah we want the, we want the authority and power and we want to do this stuff and uh, it's actually no it's intimacy friendship with God relationship with him he is the source he's in charge therefore he is opening up this realm for us to begin to operate as his sons on his behalf in his name power of attorney um, but out of relationship you know you probably need to consider the proportion of relationship to rulership and what that should be and it shouldn't be 50 50 one i don't think and i think we should go for the relationship because when you have go into relationship you need much less time in the rulership because you know what you need to do um, and you need to do it from that place so so the order of Melchizedek, what is it? Now, I've got a whole teaching sometime I'm going to do on it. I mean, I've got it ready, but um, it's going to take too long to do it here. So I'm just going to touch on it. Obviously, Hebrews 6.19, the hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope which is steadfast and sure, one which enters within the veil, where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, a lot of people get caught up with uh, Melchizedek and who is he what does he do blah 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 and there's so much stuff out there which I find some of it silly um, but it's the after the order or according to the order it's the function of Jesus is a high priest the focus is on Jesus being the high priest after that order so that we can be as joint heirs with him after that order it's not that we need to go around trying to be like Melchizedek because that's not the point you know and there's so much written out there at the minute which is somewhat confusing that says you know obviously years ago most people thought Melchizedek was Jesus and it was just a Old Testament manifestation of Jesus well it isn't you know it's also not Shem and it's also not Enoch because I've met them and they're not Melchizedek and some people are saying oh yeah so Enoch and he was given a new name Ian Clayton's view is that Melchizedek was the other cherub who was looking into the throne who did not leave as Satan did and was rewarded for that with a very high powering role within the economy of heaven and the treasury room he's high a chancellor of the treasury room of heaven which is the resources to administer the kingdom and therefore he is involved in that so it's not really about him it's about understanding who he was and after the order so that we can actually be after the order. So, verse 1 of chapter 7, this Melchizedek, king of Salem, so he was a king. So the order must be kingship, priest of the most high God. So the order must be priesthood. Was first of all, by the translation of his name, king of righteousness. So there's an aspect of being the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. Then also king of Salem, which is the king of peace. So there's an aspect that it must bring peace and wholeness, which is without a father, without a mother, without genealogy. So the order must be transformed to not have earthly genealogy, so the enemy has nothing in them, so that they come from pure, being pure of heart and having no genetic seed line bloodline issues. So that's what we sort of learn from it, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Well, that's exactly what I'd like. You know, my beginning of days is in eternity and my end of life is in eternity and in between I'm going to live forever so that that's what I take from this also being made like the Son of God not the Son of God but like the Son of God and also I'm being made into a Son of God he remains a priest perpetually so this is not something that's going to end it's a continual order and function when this sort of dispensation comes to an end Jesus returns and gives the kingdom back to the father this will still go on the order of Melchizedek will still go on and that function will still go on if you want to know what the son of man is like Revelation 1 13 I saw one like a son of man not the son of man but like a son of man so what we're like when we go into the realm of heaven if you actually look at without the residual memory that we often look at each other with to actually see what we're like this is what it described clothed in robe reaching to his feet girded across his chest with a golden sash his head and his hair were white like wool so some of us are on the way 
Um, like snow, and his eyes were flames of fire. His feet were burnished bronze. Has anyone got, yeah, he's got some of these light feet are over there, see? When it was made to glow in a furnace, so light, his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand held seven stars, out of his mouth came a sharp two edged sword. Okay, so some of the things we need to bring the sword. And his face was like the sun shining in its strength, transfigured. So, if we want to know what it is to be made like the sun, well, there's a good description. Now, some of that is very figurative of stuff which we need to embrace, but that's we're like beings. So, Hebrews 10:19. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way, see, we've we've talked about this. The order of Melchizedek has to enter the holy place. It has to enter into heaven beyond the veil to operate. It's a royal priesthood, a heavenly priesthood, not an earthly one, because there are no earthly priests. That whole order ended. The old covenant system has ended. Anyone who calls themselves a priest or a father on earth, Jesus said, don't. Um, so, Hebrews 7.22, so much more also Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. The old covenant is ended, and all things to do with it are now obsolete, it says. We have a better covenant. We don't need to go back to any of that stuff. But that's what the enemy is always trying to get the church to go back to, an old covenant system. Because he knows if we live in the power of the new covenant, his, ends are o his days are over. You know, he's got no authority over those who live in the power of a new covenant. So a new covenant is a heavenly order for all of us. We all can enter, not just a few of us can enter. Because Jesus is gone as a forerunner for all of us to be a royal priesthood. So the order of Melchizedek is a heavenly order. Only the tribe of Levi and the family of Aaron could be priests and high priests. And they no longer exist. Therefore Jesus, who was not of the family of Levi or Aaron, could not be a priest on the earth. But he could be a priest after the order of Melchizedek, which was not after that genealogy, because it was a heavenly one and an eternal one so Jesus is a priest on the other side of the veil and so are we so there can be no earthly priesthood right now so the old earthly order was corrupted in fact Jesus actually talked to the old order and basically said that they were of their father the devil so they had very much serpent seed and if you go into history and look at who the high priests were they weren't of the right order anyway. They bought their thing and they were Edomites because they came from, not from Jacob, but from Esau, who gave up his birthright. So they were not of the right seed, which is why he said, you are of the father, the devil, which was not a very pleasant thing for them to hear, but was the truth. So both priestly and kingly is the order. Therefore, that's why we're called the royal priesthood. So we must be sure that we have no human genealogy left because that will come out of chaos of the fall. So we need to be transformed at all levels so that we can live forever to be perpetual. And I really believe that we don't need to die. If death came through sin and sin was dealt with by the cross, why should there be death? Only because we're living in a covenant with it and we haven't learned to embrace taking on communion body and blood of Jesus eat in his flesh and drink in his blood as it says so that we can live forever so that we can have everlasting life and we can have life which is eternal which is the equality of eternity now so living from eternity now which is what we do by going what into what was and bring it into what is so that really is what the order is about like the son of God now there is a degree where Adam and Eve were sinless but not perfected. They would have still have been predestined to be conformed to the image of God. And there would have been nine steps of ascension represented the nine fire stones, which would have been embracing the nine strands of God's DNA to make 12 strands, which is the fullness of our makeup. So we didn't do too well only having two to start with. Then we get the light strand reborn if you like and added in to make three three stranded cord but we need to embrace the nine strands of God's DNA to become conformed to his image which we do 
in the, on the fire stones, we do take in communion, and we also do when we engage the dance floor. And the dance floor is an area of, of the heart, um, garden, dance floor, soaking room, bridal chamber. It's a whole process of bringing us into uh, a perfected bride. We just have to get used to it, guys, <laughs> if we're a bride. Uh, I, I do have some teaching on it, yeah, and different, different. I've sort of brought things. I've, I've got a whole set of teaching I'm starting to look at in terms of DNA and understanding it, but I don't know when I'll ever do it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. So the order will be priestly mediators in the right side on the other side of the veil we're okay to be mediators there because we're mediating between heaven and earth and bringing heaven to release people into heaven not being in their way we're opening it up for them so we're mediators for creation to restore the earth to its original position by bringing heaven and earth to that overlapping place so that we can see the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven so that order will be kingly, therefore governmental, and legislative to the affairs of the nations, to disciple the nations. And so the mountain of the house of the Lord raised up, all the nations will stream to it. If we shine, rise, shine, your light has come, the nations will stream to that light. So we need to be glorified. Now they're only going to come to a representation of the light of the world. And therefore Jesus said he was the light of the world, and then he then said we were to be the light of the world. Um, and that literally means the light of the world you know we need to be radiating creative light not living in created light which we do now so everything really is dying you know the sort of entropy second law of thermodynamics is everything's running down whereas actually we're supposed to bring everything into life so we're supposed to bring the frequency which is low in the planet and everything else because we carry a higher frequency because we've vibrated with the frequency and are vibrating with love therefore we raise the frequency and bring it back into the right order which is what it is by vibrating the whole planet needs to come and resonate with heaven um, and that will change and transform it back to its original condition so this order has access to the mysteries of God and the treasures of God and to the resources of heaven's treasury room that's why it's after that order because that's what Melchizedek does so when we engage true legislation, the resources for that legislation will always be available. Now, there's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, you know, that says about always having all sufficiency in everything and an abundance for every good deed. So everything that we need in all times, at every place and an abundance for even more. And we need to see that that's the grace of God. The divine ability of God is to resource everything that we're called to do. Um, and you see Jesus having ways of supernaturally embracing things also naturally. Um, so it's natural and supernatural that we were able to access. Melchizedek and this order has revelation through the sapphire cube, which is the Metatron's cube, on the sapphire pavement and on the throne in regards to heavenly trading. Now, I haven't got time to go into trading this time. But the pavement that Moses stood when he went up into heaven with the 70 elders was a sapphire pavement and the scroll, throne of God is a sapphire throne. And that pavement, there's revelation that would have been in the cube or the, the tablets, let's we call them, but there's a cube that contained the revelation of how the government of heaven and how the government of earth was supposed to work together. And, and how heavenly trading worked and all the information that we would need to see Moses bring the people of God into the fullness of their inheritance because if, if they had embraced their full inheritance when they went in the promised land and had not wasted it they would have come into the revelation of this if they had embraced being married to God whereas when Moses went up and they sent Moses up they ended up joining themselves to a golden calf um, and that's why they lost their inheritance in this inheritance they had an earthly inheritance but they lost their heavenly one and obviously God wants to restore it and this is the order that brings that restoration so the order reflects the four faces of God as it has access to the Holy of Holies and the revelation of the covering cherub 
we have that revelation which is linked to God's government and how God's government works in heaven and on the earth. So the new order engages heaven where the kingly and priestly function, as we said, to bring that ark, to release blueprints that then release heavenly apostolic blueprints onto the earth. And that then the prophetic and the apostolic to that blueprint and to the revelation that that blueprint contains then carry the fullness of that government onto the earth to see it manifested. Um, and therefore then it's reflected on earth as it is in heaven. Now, you know, that's the picture. We've, we've seen that one before. In actual fact, if you think of what that picture looks like, it looks like two overlapping triangles or a mountain that way and a mountain that way. And if you do that, it forms that. So when heaven and earth overlaps, and when this realm and that realm overlaps, you have what is called the Star of David. But actually, it's of the cube of Metatron, which is a multi-dimensional, one aspect of the multi-dimensional nature of it. And we get access to that. Um, and that's really fascinating, and I'm sort of looking at some of that. But if we're operating in that, there is no overlap, and there is no portal, and there's no access, and there's no revelation of any of those things. Because you're purely operating in an earthly realm. Even if you have a heavenly vision, if you operate it that way, you're outside of the resources of God for it in the order of Melchizedek treasury room. So that's why people have to manipulate people to give. Because they have no access to the heavenly resource. So they use the earthly resource, which is people. Which is not what God intended. So actually as an individual I actually sit on a, a mountain and a throne and I have a blueprint and a scroll attached to that mountain and in heaven and then I can have a shadow of that on the earth and then I can have those mountains beneath that to begin to bring that onto the earth and to bring God's government so each individual can operate this way as well and then we get access to all those resources and everything else in terms of revelation anyway so there each of us does have seven mountains with our blueprint and that's our governmental spheres and each of us is a priest and a king to that government and to that place of authority so that the kingdom can manifest in us and through us and around us as rivers of living water flow from our innermost being and form an atmosphere of the kingdom and life because that's what Ezekiel 47 says Wherever that river goes, and when it's at such a depth that it's swimmable, and we're out of our depth and flowing, then what happens is it even turns salt water fresh, and it begins to bring life wherever it goes. It's like it's swarming with fish. And, of course, we're supposed to be fishers of men. So that means when we're operating this stuff, and we're radiating the glory of God, and seeing God's kingdom flow through us, there will be people drawn to the light of our rising. And that is because we're radiating the glory of God, not because we happen to be radiating our own glory. Although, in a sense, God has given us that to reflect. So you are a son and you're called to have dominion. That reflects the government of heaven. And this is where the government starts to come in, the structures of government. That's why there needs to be a bench of three. Um, and bench of seven and that forms the house and you tend to form a house a uh, community that's what the communities are called the kahal in hebrew um, that we have a bench of 12 which is the same as 12 apostles or 12 tribes 12 foundations 12 gates as many 12 12 stones on the breastplate of the high priest 12 so the whole order of melchizedek fullness of government is 12 now interestingly uh, nine is the perfect number and nine is three times three so three for the father three for the son three for the spirit which is the nine aspects of their government nine stones that covered Satan's body to reflect the revelation of the nine aspects of God and from the nine fire stones because he stood on the fire stones in the mountain of God in his garden and had access to all that because he looked into as a covering cherub and saw all the revelation of when God released that revelation of what man was supposed to be to bring rule into the heavens 
he suddenly saw that his position was in jeopardy and rebelled and led a third of the angels to rebel because he traded with that information and knowledge and they fell for it and then there was war in heaven so nine is the number of completeness and you get that in terms of how it works as a mathematical principle you know two nines are 18 so one plus eight equals nine three nines are 27 two plus seven equals nine three nines are 36 three plus six nine and it goes on and on it's a complete number in itself and the most amazing thing that although God is complete in his government in himself father son and spirit he has chosen to include man and without man there can be no fullness of government which is 12 so we add our three to his nine to make 12 and I just find that amazing that he would choose yeah. to bring us into it to bring completeness to him even though he's complete he's chosen that government is complete with man and God so even the four faces of God is lion ox eagle man to bring the completeness of it uh, which is just you know an amazing thing and how you know how amazing God is but when Satan saw that he didn't like it and therefore rebel from his position um, so we have a bench in our um, church and if you think of 12 apostles they had three Peter James and John plus nine that made up the 12 and so we have a bench of three plus we have nine others that is a representation for each of our seven mountains plus a, the angel of the house, a representative of our bench of seven, and our external ministries, mountain, which makes 12 for us. That's our pattern of government, which God has told us. And it's a pattern. It's not about the people, because those people can change. But the pattern remains the same. Um, so we need to be aware of what heavenly government is when we're looking to establish government and understand some of the patterns of these things. So each of our mountains will have a blueprint and there are seven spheres of government authority so as a church we have seven spheres each one of those has a bench on it now praise god and each one of them will then have seven mountains and the whole thing is a pattern or a fractal of heaven so what you'll see in this region you will see representations of this and there will be a regional representation and then there will be an area representation within that regional representation and then you'll have a wider regional and then you'll have an international, a national, international all will reflect the same pattern because God is looking to establish government that is patterned after heaven so each of the seven mountains produces legislation so that godly order can be manifested on the earth um, now, as I said, this is the year of the lion, and we're seeing a lot of roaring going on. You know, a lion does not roar into the air. A lion roars into the ground. Because when they roar into the ground, the ground vibrates, and pe the other animals can hear that and feel that vibration in the ground. And we're going to see a lot of roaring in the ground. Because that's exactly what happened with Jericho, if you think. And the ground opened up and the whole walls were swallowed up. They didn't collapse and tumble and they had to climb in over the rubble. They actually went down into the ground hole. They have actually found some of that in Israel. So there's a, a focus in this on legislation this year. We need to begin to be legislate. There'll be a focus on courtroom proceedings because we need to administrate justice. So the royal priesthood functions operate in the courts and operate with legislation and justice. Um, that's part of what we need to understand. Now I have a picture there of the words that God has given us that make up government. Legislation, continuation, installation, restoration, fruition, transition, liberation, implementation, communication, resurrection, consolidation, construction, legislation. Now, you know, we're working at how that outworks with us now you get may have a whole different set of names or inferences that God will give you to say well, this is what our 12 aspects of government are going to bring into what we do because when you're setting up a city of refuge you're going to have to bring government to it you're going to have to have power sources you're going to have to have food sources you're going to have to have health sources you're going to have to have every source that comes out of heaven and you're going to have to legislate you know it's not going to be we're all going to sit around and put our feet up 
You know, there's, there's stuff to do in equipping people, preparing people, and taking ground. When the Romans took over a territory, they put in an administrator, and the center was called the Castropona, which is a governmental administrative center that they then consolidated, and then they went out and advanced and took other territory. But that was a reflection of Rome. Under Roman law, Roman custom, they brought the p local people and tried to assimilate them. Yeah. Resistance is futile. You know that one? And the kingdom is supposed to be like that. A little leaven that leavens the whole. And that sense, the kingdom as being a small seed that grows into a huge tree. You know, the whole thing is it's supposed to infiltrate and therefore change the whole of society to bring the society and the culture to reflect heaven. So we've got a lot of work to do, but we have to start with governing and bringing government into the area. Um, and that means then you start legislating against those things you don't want in the area. Because you then have authority to exclude things from your area and welcome things into your area. Lots of things there. So Isaiah 43, a voice is calling for me into the wilderness, not from the wilderness anymore, <laughs> clear the way, make smooth the desert, a highway for God, every valley lifted up, every mountain made low. So that's what we're going to be starting to see. So God said, proclaim and herald a new day, a new season, new depths, new heights, new doors, new chapters will be opened. So all this stuff is going to be new things, some things we've never ever seen before. In the mysteries of heaven, in the dark things, the, the treasures of darkness, it calls them, are going to release... You know, they're not negative things, they're just things hidden. Not hidden from us, but hidden for us to discover. And, you know, that's proverb, you know, the, the glory of God is to hide a thing and the glory of the kings to search it out. So there's things for us to find. Now, when you find them, sometimes you're completely frazzled because you don't understand what they are. Uh, and, you know, and I am. You know, I've, I've seen some things that I can't put anything to at the minute. But I know that they're there, and I know my spirit sort of resonated, but my mind was completely unfruitful at the time. Mm -hmm. But we are going to see so many things that we have not ever, ever seen, because they're there to be yet released. Mm -hmm. And some of those things will enable us to function in government and to operate cities of refuge on the earth. So I believe we're going to see a release uh, of God this year to draw things in. So we've got to be ready. You know, make everything ready and be expectant with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean being frightened, it just means being in awe of what God is going to do. Awestruck mm -hmm. with what God is going to do. Because he's going to do immeasurably, exceedingly, abundantly beyond what we can imagine or think. And I can imagine and think a lot. <laughs> but he's going to go beyond anything because I can't imagine more than I already know to a degree. Therefore, this has got to be outside of what I already know. Uh, but it's coming. So that was that angel prudence that I um, engage with and do engage with. And Proverbs 8, 12 says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. Yeah. I find knowledge and discretion. Counsel is mine. Sound wisdom. I am understanding. Power is mine. So there's a lot you get from engaging with wisdom and hanging out with prudence. By me, kings reign, rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles who judge rightly. So in all these things that we need to understand about legislation, about protocols of justice, about bringing the kingdom, about being a royal priesthood, the order of Melchizedek, she's the one to go and see. Um, she is, and she isn't the spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom is one of the seven spirits of God. She is wisdom. And if you read Proverbs 8, it will and you read it rightly it will blow your mind um, when you actually look into who she was and the fact that she was there before everything else um, you're saying wisdom is what's the question is it wisdom we go to or prudence? wisdom on wisdom's heights prudence is what was given to me so I, I mean, you can you can go and hang out with her as well um, you know I I was just engage with with her because there was I was given these seven things okay. so then wisdom Proverbs being a, an angel. Wisdom, being an angel wisdom is a created being a created yeah 
but has been around a long, long time. If you think of time, yeah. <laughs> beyond time. Um, so when you read, there's, there's a lot in that chapter, which is really amazing stuff. So verse not chapter nine, wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has prepared her food and she's mixed her wine. She has set her table. She has sent out her maidens and she calls from the tops of the heights of the city to the sons of men to come. She's calling to people to come. Because she wants to prepare us to rule. That's her function, to help us to rule. And prudence is alongside her and she brings us into a revelation that we couldn't have had outside of that. So I was told to engage prudence and her gifts to open the revelation of the twelve houses. The seven gifts will enable you to navigate the dimensions that you're to be opened. And they are all dimensional things. They're not just in this dimension that you have to engage when you're engaged in the twelve houses. So I was given a sextant, a compass, log books, map of territories, instruments for measuring wind, sound, waves, light, and a trumpet to herald a call. Um, and, you know, I've been needing to use those things to find my way. Now, it's not like I go up with a sextant and try measuring stuff, but it's something that I've been given insight into to be able to see where things are and to see where things add up and where maps are and where territories are, you know. Yeah, she she gave me those things. Yeah, um, and someone saw her doing it, uh, and someone wrote it out and painted that picture while I was engaging, which I thought well, that was really cool. <laughs> so I wasn't sure anyone else was watching what I was doing, <laughs> but someone was, <laughs> which is great. It says, son, I'm calling you to a new level of government authority. It is time to come near to me. <coughs> And the heights of wisdom will be open. So God opens the heights of wisdom to you. And he very much wants you to go there. And it's an amazing place. I mean, the doors that are there, the pathways, the ancient path, the way, and gates into the city, I mean, they're all there. And the wisdom's pillars. I mean, to go and stand in wisdom pillars, I mean, it's just, ooh, I mean, I, I can't describe it. Um, but when I look into wisdom's eyes, I see deep, deep, deep into things. It's, her eyes are amazing. So if you can look up into them, if you're tiny, you might have to ca carry a box with you, but she's quite tall. <laughs> then you have to go through a whole bunch of other steps before you can see? Um, no, no. You set, again, set your desire on it. If you want to go to wisdom's heights, set your desire on it. Read Proverbs 8 and Proverbs 9. Meditate on it. Cultivate the desire. Exactly. This is the sort of thing you cultivate desire for. And it's like, there's a scripture. Wow, I, I want to rule. I want to know how to bring righteousness and justice. I want to understand wisdom's pillars. I want to understand how to access the doors, how to go through the gate. I want, I want to be in that pillar of wisdom. You just start to think and meditate and cultivate the desire until you're willing to pay the cost for it, which may be pursuing this stuff so that it opens up. But it does. And, you know, I mean, for me, I just go there whenever I want because you know, I've been there so many times. It's just part of my pathway that is ingrained and I just think about it and I can go there. But I, I love going there, you know, and she's taken me through some of those doors and shown me some things. And I said earlier, I think today, about going under the earth and engaging in Satan's trophy room with a seal. She gave me the scepter and, you know, the seal um, and the staff. Um, I, when I went and went to the Galactic Council, she took me. I went to her and said, take me. I need, I need guidance in the protocol. So even though I had the court case, I had everything ready, I, she went with me. Um, and that's very helpful. Because I knew what to do, instinctively. If she wasn't there, I wouldn't have known what to do. It wasn't like she was saying, do this, do this and this. But she endued me with wisdom because she was by my side um, and that, that's what happens you, you know because that wisdom is imparted and it releases that for you to know what to do you know so I went there and just knew what to do so, I've been Solomon yeah, hmm? yeah. Solomon. well Solomon had wisdom yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you know and again you can set your desire on wisdom you know I want wisdom I want to operate in wisdom you know and then you cultivate that and then 
the desires of your heart will be released to you. Um, so which is great. So you know, it says, I have given you the strategic instruments to plot the course ahead. My scroll, actually my scroll has a large ship on it. And quite a number of people have actually um, commented on that recently prophetically um, and shown me some things or seen some things, which I think I find quite amusing. But originally this ship was a, a huge ship. It was like a cruise ship, but there were no crew and passengers. It was just a thing. And on it, there was this huge satellite dish. You know, and I didn't know when I first saw it. You know, well, I don't know what that means. Um, but then when I started engaging people around the world, it was really obvious. Um, and then actually, there was a helicopter landing pad on it, and I saw helicopters landing and going up and down, whatever. And, you know, and the very first time I was asked to do a conference, which was in Guildford in, in England, um, I was sort of like, do I really want to do this? It was with Justin Abraham. And it was like, you know, this conference on engaging heaven and stuff. And it was like, oh, do I really want to do it? I'm not really sure I do. So this guy comes and he says, I had this dream. This is a really weird dream. And I don't really understand what it means. But can I tell you? So I said, yeah, sure. Yeah, he's one of our bench of seven. So it's like, it's a dream. And he's, he's very prophetic, but he, he didn't know what he was seeing. But he said, I, I saw this ship. And it was really strange because this ship was being lifted up by a helicopter. And it was carried and it was prop. It was actually placed on a tributary of the Thames River. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> so I sort of think, oh, is Guildford on the Thames River? So I went and found out. Yes, it is. It's on a tributary of the Thames River. Because this was a symbol of what the picture of I'd seen on my blueprint of being taken and used in that area. So it was a confirmation. And so I had to say yes. <laughs> you know, much choice then, really. Um, so, you know, that whole scroll thing. I mean, I think I was talking to some guys over in Portland and there, there's a bench over there that I'm working with and they've got a, an angel of the house who's the husband of one of the ladies. Um, and he said, I, I had this prophetic picture about you and you were standing in the ocean between the US and you had all these ships and these ships were going out at your thing. <laughs> so, okay, it's really interesting. Because people sort of pick up things from your destiny, you know. Um, so that was uh, originally that ship was anchored and recently anchor was weighed and it started to move so that's why I'm sort of a bit more comfortable about moving around rather than being stuck where I am so, uh, so. anyway so prudence will partner with you to discover the protocols that will open the doors release my people into their positions of true heavenly authority a new quest is your reward for faithfulness I think I'm not sure it was such a reward. <laughs> Engage the waterfall and your quest will be revealed, I was told. So I went back there. You know, I give you the quest to unveil the depths of the fire stones and the sapphire cube, uh, which has been really quite interesting. The affairs of the nations must be brought into order and called into alignment with eternity. The house of scrolls will be opened once my precepts, statutes, laws are in sequence and the ordinances of heaven have been set into motion. That is what's going on right now prophetically. The ordinances of heaven are being set into motion because the statutes, precepts and laws are in alignment in the circle of the deep and therefore the fourth door because there are four seasons of three <coughs> houses and when the third house comes into alignment it joins with the fourth to make a window. So the third of the first set are the laws of God and then they then trigger the ordinance of God to come into alignment, which opens a window for that to come through, and that's what's going on, on the earth right now. The ordinances of God are released, and there are movements, and there are angelic troop movements, and there's all sorts of things going on strategically to set things in their right place. Um, and, you know, things are set in motion. That it's already in motion, and it's already happening, and that's why some of the shaking and some of the things are going on. Um, your task is to unveil chancellors with the revelation of their true destiny so I want to see more chancellors raised up mm -hmm. you know, I think there's a few I know Ian Clayton's one um, but I'm not that many and we need to be occupying the chancellor's court uh, so I want to see those God desires that don't be overawed by your task it's your destiny I thought, well, thank you very much <laughs> uh, and then God knows me very well he says yield and surrender and embrace the challenge 
<laughs> so yep, I had to yield and surrender and embrace the challenge. And it actually is a challenge. I, you know, I don't. You know, I might be laughing, but I don't take it lightly. I think I take it very seriously. And you know, I know the things that are going on, and you know, people's lives and their destiny is at stake. You know, you know, I don't want people to miss out on the fullness of their destiny. I want people to embrace it. You know, if people don't take their destiny, God will give it to somebody else. That's what happens in the parable of the talents. You know, I honestly am doing some things that I wasn't first choice over, you know, because I'm willing, you know, or stupid. I mean, one of the other. <laughs> so beware false covenants and alliances, but actively pursue the relationships that I set before you. And I am always looking for governmental relationships, always. You know, I'm, I sniff it out. You know, so very first things when I engage with most people, you know, in, in the mentoring groups originally was when I put out on Facebook in a Facebook group that I was part of before I got thrown out of it. So. Uh, <laughs> um, and I put out a thing for anyone feel, felt called to have any government. And I wanted to see who would respond. And most of the original people that I was mentoring responded to that. Now, some of them didn't have a clue. They were just like, oh, yeah, I want to hang out with you. <laughs> so, you know, and I soon sniffed that out and found out that they didn't have a clue. But, you know, I'm still happy to answer their questions. But I'm looking for those who know there's a call. They know that there's something drawing them to government so that I can begin to help them and encourage them. So I'm always really happy to talk about governmental things. You know, and when people ask me governmental questions, they usually get more than they bargain for because I just <laughs> spill stuff, you know. So, you know, I, I am pursuing that. I will set before you the opportunity to invest in many benches. You must now be proactive and not reactive. You know, I used to sit back and look to see. Now I start to call and I start to legislate and I start to call. And so this whole Northwest thing, you know, it's like you know, Northwest has just been in my heart. And because I can see the importance of the establishing of government here. And I'll talk about that in the next session. Call the benches to arise, call the blueprints to be released and the sh from the shadows to form. So I, I want to see those shadows on the earth. I want to see where cities of refuge are going to form. You know, I long to see cities of refuge raised up, but you need authority to establish them and blueprints released for them. So I do that. That's what I do in my spare time. <laughs> call things into being and release blueprints and see the scroll house opened up and see the mantle room opened up and stuff that we can receive those mantles and scrolls that will be governmental destiny. You must focus on the governmental functions of lordship and kingship. And I've been doing a lot more of that this year. I've given you swords of truth and judgment. You must wield them with precision. Order, order, order. The court is in session and the gavel is raised. Mm. And that's coming down in August the 8th. And that will be judgment released use this pause until that's over until September wisely to establish the order of the king as the lion takes focus so it's like we need to get government established we need to see it begin to take its place even if it's just the beginnings you know it will be a sign that we're going to be ready for what's coming Do you think it's okay that you're not totally ready by August oh yeah it's because the heart is the issue I mean God sees the heart he knows those people who are, who are crossing over, want to cross over, have the desire of following the sound. You know, you, you, it's not that we have to know everything. It's like, I don't know hardly anything, you know. I might sound like I do, but, you know, I actually, when it comes to it, I know very little. But the bit I do, I try to outwork. And then I seek for more, you know. But we're all on a journey, and all, we'll all find <coughs> things that we need to know when we engage, you know. So the very stars are waiting for their repositioning orders as the suns accept their call to action from their mandated positions of true government authority. Now that may be talking about literal stars and so there is a realignment of some heavenly things but actually stars are also signs of angels. So there's got to be a lot of angels being repositioned and awaiting for the ordinances, the troop orders, the movement orders, the commissioning places which are coming and they're just waiting for people to start doing it. Because it isn't God who's going to do it. It's us who's going to do it. So that's why we need to go to the court of angels to find who's volunteering from our mandates and our blueprints so that we can see who wants to be involved in this and then there's the assignments that we can give. 
you know, and we really seriously have to learn to use that because they will do things we cannot. You know, they make connections with people that I can't. And, you know, a lot of that is supernatural, you know, that I choose to send out those angels and because I, I want the right connections with the right people in the kingdom. You know, none of you are here by accident. You know, God wants you here for a purpose. You know, and those of you who are here from this area, but those who aren't, there's also a purpose in that because then there's a now establishing of new relationship. There's a connection between the southwest and the south northwest. And there's a connection with me, and I'm certainly wanting to go and engage in every area that's on my sphere of influence. You know, so God knows what he's doing when he does this. You know, I, I would be here if there was three people, two people, or one person. Because it's not about how many people are here. It's about those people who are going to engage what God's doing and be inspired to go away and pursue their position of government. You know, so for me, I'm, you know, I would be here if there's a few people. You know, I didn't ask how many people were coming to, to any of these things. I have no idea how many people are coming. It's irrelevant. You know, I'm not demand that, oh, wow, we need a big hall and we need to do all this stuff. And, you know, it's just I want to hang out with people who are drawn to the same sound because we start resonating together and stuff happens when we come together. There's creativity when people come together. You know, we spark things. Things happen, you know. If, I, if you weren't here, I wouldn't be saying the things that I'm saying. You know, I could preach to one person, but I wouldn't be drawn to say some of the things that I've no idea why I'm saying them. I just say them, you know. <laughs> but I know there's a reason for saying some of the things, because there's something that's drawing or connecting or that God wants to inspire as a result of it. <coughs> so everything is being prepared for the new order who will legislate statutes, ordinances, because they know my ways my testimonies and fully understand the counsel of my precepts so important that we understand the precepts of God that we know him that we know his heart that we have revelation of his heart because that is what enables us to do things from his heart when we legislate so we're doing it because we're in re relationship with him and we release his heart in what we're doing the ancient laws will be unveiled. The mysteries hidden within the dark cloud of my true person are being brought into the fullness of my light. The books are being opened and the ancient scrolls are once more again being read. The creative force of my eternal desire for oneness is building. Mm -hmm. Pressure is increasing. The sound will be heard by true sons. Come on. Now, these things are coming. It is the time that I am about to hold back the water so the veil will be drawn. And I assume he's talking about like the waters of Jer uh, Jordan so that people can cross. Um, but I think that's really the thing. He's, he's going to draw it back. Yeah. And it's like, hey, come over. Because it takes certain people to try and get over in the flood. You know, those who are willing to take the risks, you know, get over there at any cost, you know. And, you know, I'm one of those. I'll, I'll do whatever, you know. If I was in the Wild West, I would be out on the Pioneer Trail. You know, it's like that. that's just my nature, if you like, that God's given me. I desire to find new things and to explore. Um, so who will leave the old ways the old, of the old order and cross over into the new of this dimension of the order of Melchizedek? God's asking. He's going to keep asking. He's going to keep calling. Even after August has come, for those who are in the wilderness, that's not the end of it. You know, the governmental systems it's the end of, but not the people. God is going to keep calling people. He's still calling people to intimacy who are stuck in religious systems and wouldn't know intimacy if it hit them in the face. You know, but he's still calling them, and they will respond. More and more people will respond. He's still calling people to embrace gathering of stumbling blocks. So much easier when you know intimacy because you know it's about love. Otherwise, if your stumbling blocks come and you don't know intimacy then there's fear and there's suspicion and everything else that goes with it. So that's why we must embrace sonship because it's easier then for the stumbling blocks and things to be removed because we just desire it. We just desire to be pure and holy. So creation is waiting and will take a deep breath in anticipation of the revealing of true sons in their heavenly positions. And that deep breath may result in shiftings actually within the nature of creation and there are sort of shiftings in poles and there are shiftings in things that are going to take place that you know is like what happens when you breathe in and pause 
things start to move so things are happening who will cross over and embrace their destinies the heavenly sound is intensifying and the wind of chains are about to blow with great force get ready be ready for the shift in dimensions is being prepared great shifts are going to be released in all spheres of authority as the mountains of the house of the lord emerges from the wilderness to embrace its inheritance you know and you know years ago when i saw this vision of the mountain coming out of the desert this is what it was you know and within the mountain of the house of the lord there has been this huge battle between the apostolic and the pastoral for authority who is going to rule no, and that will determine how quickly the mountain of the house of the Lord will be raised up because it won't be raised up with pastoral leadership because that won't be able to bring the government of heaven to earth mm -hmm. yeah, so. so the ground is about to break open the landscape will be radically transformed a voice is crying out from the wilderness prepare the way for my people to cross let my forerunners cry out cross over, cross over as they shift dimensions and open the portals into the realms of the, king, of the kingdom of glory. Arise, shine with your glory as the glory of true sons is revealed. Son, prepare, prepare, prepare for new depths of revelation that my people need in this hour. You know, which is why you know, I'm willing to come and talk to anybody about this stuff because it's just I want to release whatever I've got so that people can embrace it you know, and find their part in it and then go away and outwork it. So I will accelerate your ability and increase your capacity. And I've found that, you know, this year I've had a, an acceleration of the things I can do and a real increase in the capacity to do things. You know, January, you know, I took on 20 new groups of meet, meeting people. Mm. You know, I wouldn't have even thought I could have done that last year. But it's not stopped me doing everything else, you know. And I've really loved it and, and I look to do more. So, you know... I will increase your capacity and give you the key to unlock the same abilities and capacities in those who are willing to follow you into the new order. You know, God is going to expand our time or contract what it takes to do things. You know, he will enable us to do these things. A new order for a new spiritual landscape is about to arise. You know, I'm looking out at some of them. You know, it's calling you. It's calling you to this new order. Because you know, there is going to be a new spiritual landscape. Things are going to be different. It's not going to be the same. You know, the mountains are going to be laid low. The valleys are going to be lifted up. And all the crooked places made straight. There's a new landscape. And it's going to be making it easy for people to come. You know, so. so, 12 houses are about to release their mysteries and the protocols to those who will follow the ancient past to engage wisdom. You know, this stuff is not new but it involves engaging the ancient past to understand it and this those paths have not been walked for a long time Enoch knew a lot about this stuff because he walked those paths Elijah knew about this stuff because he walked those paths <coughs> Moses knew about some of these things because he went onto the sapphire pavement and actually had a look at the sapphire cube so the, where things are released so she calls to the sons of men to come and walk as Enoch on the ancient paths in the ancient knowledge and ways wisdom's pillars are once again to be shattered on the earth as it is on our heights 12 pillars 12 stones 12 foundations 12 gates 12 houses and their revelations are to come out of darkness into the light so we've got a lot of revelation coming i'm really looking forward to it you know and we're just seeing a little glimpse of the light you know it's going to shine brightly and that's going to be amazing because it's all multicolored and these things released I love the sort of principle of, you know, the manifold wisdom of God being made known to all those spiritual forces through who? The Ecclesia of God. You know, the Ecclesia of God is going to make known the manifold, multicolored, multifaceted wisdom of God. Because we're going to operate in it. Because we're going to see it. And there we're going to release it. So, amazing things to come. The mysteries hidden for so long in the shrouded mists are being ready to come forth from the myths and mythologies into the light. There's so many myths and mythologies which we just think are that but actually aren't. And there's truth in so many things that it's going to come into the light. Ancient ways on the ancient path brought out of darkness and into the light of creativity. Power to create with conscious thought and the frequencies of sound and light will be restored to the true sons of God once again. 
you know, my reward for one of the quests was to understand the principles of using sound and light in ancient technology. Ancient technology was not manufactured or built. It was made by creating and it will be in the future. We will make organic things with organic metal and other organic things to produce power and other things. And we will interact with those things. Uh, way more than what we can imagine or think now because our consciousness is limited and it's going to expand into sonship. Uh, I watched a film on the plane over called Lucy, if any of you have seen it, about the capacity to use more than 10% of our brain. And uh, it was so prophetic of what people will be able to do. Uh, for you ladies, I mean, turning your hair from green to red to white to black <laughs> instantly, it's just, it's like, wow, you're going to love that. You know, um, I was thinking more of some other stuff she did. <laughs> uh, but amazing the power that's locked up, unyielded and unused, that Adam had. The bandwidths of light and sound and using of that was removed at the fall. It was removed at the flood. You see, they saw the rainbow at the flood and it was a sign that that's what they could now see. They could see more colour and more wavelengths and bandwidths before the flood. They also, when the Tower of Babel came, lost sound abilities. It wasn't just the oh well their language is confused they lost the ability in the wavelength of sound mm -hmm. so we're going to get that restored um, <coughs> which is going to be fun yeah. Yeah. so come back to creation's womb I, mean, I love this place my heart to see that what was and release what is to become what will be you know, God has been just calling me and calling me into this place and he's calling his body into that place you know, my heart is open to you come and see come and see who you've always been I call out to you come and see come to my heart and you will see once more what has always been and I love that I was quite poetic and sort of like yeah I, I, I want that I've set the desires of my heart on that which mean I'll get it more and more because I have a desire to pursue that and experience it progressive revelation you say this the progressive character of divine revelation is recognized in relation to all the great doctrines in the Bible. And this is a quote. What at first is only obscurely intimated is gradually unfolded in subsequent parts of the sacred volume until the truth is revealed in fullness. So even in the word of God, you see things hidden in the Old Testament and in the Old Covenant as shadows and types. And then they get revealed in the New Testament in Jesus because all the promises of God are yes and amen in him. Well, it doesn't stop there. It continues because revelation is going to continue to be released progressively. That's why books are open now which haven't been open before that's releasing things now that haven't been released before. So everything is going to be progressive. So we recognize that God is continually restoring church and light to the church. We therefore place no limit on further revelation. However, each must be substantiated according to the scriptures. So yes, we need to see that that revelation is in line with what has gone before but it doesn't have to be restricted to it because progressive revelation will bring us into things which are beyond the book because there's so much more than in the book the book introduces us to the person and the person is the living word of God and the living truth and therefore in him there aren't enough libraries in the world to contain all the books that would reveal everything that there is to know and you only have to go into the book room in heaven to see how many books there are and Ian Clayton says that he's gone in there and he's read books and he knows how to do things instantly like weld and things like that for him you know I don't know why he'd want to go and read a book about welding but he makes things apparently you know I would want to go and read about different things but I went into that library I've been into that book room and I was only allowed to read one book because God knew if I could see all the books in there I'd never come out you know <laughs> At that point, because my soul would have been so, so wanting to read everything, I would have been there for eternity, keep reading. Um, so I was allowed to read one book, and the light were turned off, couldn't see anything else. I knew they were all there, and it was like, how frustrating is that for someone who wants to know stuff? <laughs> but God knows what he was doing, I can tell you. 
I d- no, I don't know. It might have been. <laughs> All oh, right, could have been. Mysteries hidden in truth, mystical truth revealed by the light of experience. You know, we're going to experience these things, not just read about them. And that's why it's going to be progressively unveiled veiled to us because we're going to experience it. Daniel 12.3 read this this morning. Those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. So you want insight? You're going to shine with it. You can't contain it. You're going to have to release it. And basically, we will shine like stars forever and ever. And as for you, Daniel, seal up and conceal these books. Seal up the book until the end of time. Many will go back and forth. The knowledge will increase. That's why we're at that time when this book is being opened. Now, in terms of mysteries and things unveiled, the whole New Testament is full of it. Romans 16.25 Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which has been kept secret in long ages past. So everything is being unveiled which in the past was a mystery. Ephesians 3.4 By referring to this when you read you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. The mystery of how the anointing and the power of God works. Colossians 2.2 2, that their hearts may be encouraged having been knit together in love came to all the wealth that comes from all the full assurance of understanding resulting in true knowledge of God's mystery that is Christ himself so all those things of the living word are going to be revealed and are being revealed Colossians 1.27 to whom God willed to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery amongst the Gentiles which is Christ in you the hope of glory so the mystery of what it is to be Christ in me is being revealed. So what was known about it then is not what is known about it now. And the more I engage it, the more I know about it because it's unveiled in the experience and the relationship. So that's why it's always deep calling to deep for more. You know, I'm never going to attain to the full knowledge of everything because that would be God. But I'm going to pursue as much as I possibly can and not stop. You know, experiential knowledge by encounter I'm not talking about intellectual information so a way must be made for my new generation to find their destinies the whole of the creative orders are waiting longingly for the sons to arise and res- to restore them so we are supposed to restore the creative orders ancient paths are going to open once again where my people can walk with me in restored knowledge that was lost and you have those paths, scriptures about those paths, many names where the paths meet on the way, paths of righteousness, everlasting way, highway of holiness, ancient paths. And you have this thing in, in Jeremiah, thus saith the Lord, stand by the ways, the ways are on wisdom's heights, see and ask for the ancient paths, the paths meet where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. And they said, we will not walk in it. Mm-hmm. Can you, can you imagine that? It's like there's a prophetic word coming from God saying, come back into the everlasting way. And they're saying, we won't. <laughs> well, actually, that's what people are saying now. Yeah. We won't. We're not going to cross over. We're going to stay in the wilderness. Don't get it myself, but so people are still saying no. Jeremiah 18.15 For my people have forgotten me they burn incense to worthless gods they've stumbled from their ways from the ancient paths to walk byways and not a highway. It's like come on let's get off those byways and onto the highway. Highway of holiness. Ancient pathways. It's going to lead us to everything that we need to know. It's, It's there for us. We can walk into it. You know I am the God of the whirlwind and the fiery pillars and I'm coming soon in judgment to my people to call them to decide who they will serve I'm calling as multitudes stand in the valley of decision I call for judgment to new abundant overflowing life but the old orders must be left behind in the wilderness of indecision Adam, Enoch, Noah and the ancient ones walked on the ancient paths through the eternal dimensions they walked on the circle of the deep they walked amongst the stars they walked up through the earth I am calling you to engage in the restoration of the ancient pathways and knowledge 
sons, hear my cry, resonate with my call, align yourselves with my cause. I have shaken the old orders many times and once more the old order is about to be shaken and my new true kingdom will begin to be manifested on earth as it is in heaven. You know, this is just, I love this stuff really, but it's gone on a long time, I must admit. Um, do you want to stop there? I'll just mean, I don't know how much there is to fill out, not that much more. No, I'll finish it and then we can have a break. My government will have its expression on earth as Joshua's and Caleb's rise up and declare we will cross the line and we will take possession of our inheritance. You know, start declaring it. You know, actually, literally, I think start declaring that. We will cross the line. We will have our inheritance. We will possess it. We will dispossess whatever's in the way because we're going to take our inheritance. This new order, this new breed has been promised for 40 years. I mean, I heard in the 80s about the new breed. You know, John Wimber was talking about it. The Kansas City prophets were talking about it. The new breed. These faceless, nameless ones who are going to rise up. You know, Joel's army. You know, it was all this stuff was being prophesied. They just didn't know what they were prophesying. But actually, we are going to see it. Not only now will the force of my judgment be exerted, there will be no straddling the line. There will be no foot allowed in both camps. I'm issuing the call from my mountain. Choose you this day who you will serve. Yeah, there is fire in my eyes and a sword in my mouth. We used to sing a song like that years ago. <laughs> and I'm worthy to loose the seals. It's time to face the consuming fire of judgment. Who will bring me their scrolls? Who is prepared to come before me? Who is willing to stand before him who knows all in all? Who will stand before me and be undone and unraveled? Who will embrace the fire from the altar? Who will fly with the seraphim? Who will be my burning ones? Who will be fire starters? Who, who, who? I hope some of you are saying, me, me, me. <laughs> judgment calls, judgment beckons. Who will accept their destiny? Who will come to the lion? Who is worthy to open the scrolls? The lion is. He's going to open your scrolls. Who will stand before the eyes of fire? Who will stand in the river of fire? Who will ascend to the firestones of my holy mountain? Who will take their positions on the ancient path enthroned on my right hand? Those who will establish the pillars of fire on the earth from heaven. Those who will walk through the walls of fire and will burn as living flames. Those who will establish my storehouses, my embassies, my habitations, my beachheads, my cities of refuge, my gardens. You know, God is wanting to see who's going to establish this stuff. Heaven is looking to see its reflection on the earth and then the everlasting doors will be opened and the fire will purge the atmosphere as the canopy of fire spreads joining my pillars and becoming my covering once again. You know, we're going to have the right fire covering us. You know, it's going to purify the atmosphere. It's going to purify the new age. It's going to take it all back, and we're going to get everything back which belongs to us, which has been robbed and stolen by the enemy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Son, it is time. Listen carefully to everything I have to impart to you. You must rise up, take your place in government. <coughs> I've assigned you a chancellor's position. I've given you a seal. It's time to begin to engage the twelve houses to release the understanding of the twelve heavenly doors. So I've been doing that. Not ready to release it yet, but I've been doing it. You know, go to each house in sequence. This took me nine months. You will be able to reach, receive the revelation you need to authorize and release heavenly authority. Release your frequency. Issue the call for the government to arise. I'm continually doing that. I'm positioning those who will hear the call. And I'm really seeing some people here who's positioned to hear the call. But you must be ready to invest them and seal their mandate. So I'll do whatever I can to get anyone in positions of government and help them. You know, it's like I'll sacrifice to find more time to meet with people who want to be in government. You know, son, take your position and be ready for enthronements and coronations in the realms of heavenly government. I know your heart, I know your struggles, but don't be distracted from your heavenly assignment and quests. Battles are for true government to reflect my house and my servant dominion. Release of the angelic harbingers is near. Those who refuse to embrace an order will be given a choice until I remove my approval and presence from their stewardship. Those who refuse sonship because they ignored true friendship will depart from me because I don't know them. Sad. Their destinies will pass to others who've been faithful to put relationship before ministry. So serious stuff, really. There will be many successions that take place as the old orders are removed and the new succeed them in the heaven. 
There will be many re reassignments this coming year. Be ready to recognise and to authorise them. True government patterned after heaven will be established. I'm looking for sons who will take their heavenly positions and will be who they always were. The pendulum is about to swing. Momentum will increase and more and more will enter <coughs> the veils. I experience my person. The dark cloud beckons and the eternal flame will be, be embraced. Deeper experiences of my manifold multifaceted mysteries are to be encountered and the great shifts will take place. Yeah. Um, so this is, you know, stuff. And now, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. It says, don't be distracted by the esoteric illusions that are being released that tickle the ears of the immature. Mysteries hidden for so long are to be made plain for those willing to embrace their positions of responsibility. We don't hide things or veil them so people can't understand them. Some people do, seemingly. Deep to deep beckons, but the cost must be weighed. The mysteries hidden will be made plain for those who will pursue me. The dimensions must be entered by, for revelation of the mysteries to be opened up and governmental authority revealed. The mysteries once hidden are awaiting those who will answer the call to take their places in heavenly government. Almost there. I will issue the call once more again to make it simple. Sapphire cube and the dimensions which my, within my dimensions have been mysteries but now they will be experienced by those who are willing to come within. There is so much more to find. Three, the four, the seven, twelve dimensions of governmental orders will be revealed through personal encounter with these heavenly dimension spheres, not through the esoteric ramblings of so-called mystics, who place veils of mystery over the eyes of those who look and listen but have not entered in and have not taken their position as lords. See, many people are listening and looking at things, but they're not entering in. And, you know, the word says, you know, don't be caught up with myths and fables. We want the revelation of the truth. You know, and I, I'm consciously aware of some of the things that are being said and some of the things that are being presented, and they bring more confusion than they do revelation, because they just pe leave people thinking, oh, that person must know a lot, but I can't understand what they're on about. Now, I hope you can understand some of what I'm on about, but, <laughs> um, but we have to take our places. You know, Metatron is my chosen vessel for this year. The keys to understanding the times will be given freely, and the doors to the menstrual spheres of true government will be opened, Metatron will give the keys and open the doors to those willing to let go of the old and then fully embrace the new order, lengthening and shortening the time for the resourcing of good deeds. So there's going to be some supernatural manifestation given us to do things. Last thing, the order of Melchizedek will arise and be revealed when the last generation finally refuses to cross and the 40 years is complete. We're going to see a big shift coming. Amen?